Hello, I'm Damien Barrett and welcome to the 2018 wash-up for the Melbourne Football Club, brought to you by Karcher, Callum Toomey and Matthew Lloyd are here with me. And Carol, a sour end for the Demons, but there's got to be some excitement for what lies ahead for this group. Yeah, absolutely, Damo. It was a great season. I think they probably achieved a little bit more than many would have expected they would. They won a couple of finals. They played in the finals without Jake Lever and Jesse Hogan, so I think they've got plenty more good stuff to come, Woody. But would they be scarred by what happened in the prelim against the Eagles? I don't think we'll be able to know till next year, Cal. It'll go one way or the other. You look at the Adelaide Crows, you would have thought that scarring from grand final day would have helped them for this year, but you know, I reckon it went the other way, so I think we'll know sort of uh, by next year. But I think their group is so young, in a great window of age that they'll uh, hit back pretty hard next year. Well, sometimes uh, assume, can't we, something mm. happens in one year, yeah. we'll carry into a next, mm. good, bad or indifferent. Uh, I'm not a subscriber yeah. to that mm. hurting them big picture-wise. I reckon they had a really good year. Uh, that was a bad result. We'll talk about that in a moment. But I reckon they start afresh yeah. next year knowing they can match the best. I'm with you. I think they'll be fine. They've got a young list. They like the challenge, and I think they'll be up for it next year. Lordy, the highlights? Uh, mine's uh, an ex-Hailery boy, uh, Angus Brayshaw. I just loved what he did uh, this year. Concussion issues at the start of the year, all of last year. Played VFL football at the start of the year, and some would say... Yeah, where is he at as a footballer, Cal? But uh, he's, he could possibly win a Brownlow. That's how good he was. Were you claiming year. him as a Haley boy uh, who's in the VFL at the start? Uh, of the <laughs> no, no, I've always loved uh, Angus Brayshaw. And I think that when I first saw him play, I thought Scott Pendlebury. Just the way he moved, the game stopped for him. And it's great to see him get fitter. His whole body shape has changed. He's lost that puppy fat and he just had a brilliant Top season. Top three pick and yeah. living up to the billing now, right. isn't he? Four-year yeah. deal, great effort. So many highlights, including yeah. the two finals wins. But I'll go back to round 22 when it was confirmed that the Demons would be playing finals. And it happened over in Perth. You can see the scoreline. They beat the team that's ultimately playing in the grand final this year. It was a, a real win. They celebrated it hard. And I had no issues with it because you go back to round 23 last year when they uh, were very disappointed how they lost their game and had other games go against them. They missed out on the finals. That sort of buoyancy and that attitude and that celebration, I think, allowed them to go into round 23 and then finals wins against Geelong and Hawthorne. And it really, to me, has yeah. set up the big picture really well. Yeah, that was probably the highlight off the season for the Ds, apart from those two finals wins. The low light, though, I think, came in round 15 when they lost to the Saints. A shocking performance, really. Got done by a couple of points uh, at the G here. We see Jack Stephen kick what turned out to be the match winner. Look, it cost them a top four spot, Lloydie, and these are the sort of games that they just drop occasionally. They still lost five games by 10 points or less this season, so if they can turn that around, I know they're in these games, yeah. and that's what Simon Goodwin kept pointing to, mm. but there is a little bit of fragility still there about them, I think. Yeah, they're the games you'd say probably Richmond and West Coast, the top two clubs most of the year, didn't lose, and that's their next step, Damo, moving forward yeah. next year. They got on with things, didn't they? Mm. They had bad losses like that, but then responded. Yeah. They also responded to the losses of players through injury, and Jake Lever, they brought him in to play a role, and he was just starting to knuckle down into that particular yeah. role. And when he went down about mid-season-wise, it was always going to be hard to replace. And again, I know they got on with it, but it just set them back, as it did when Hogan went down too. So I reckon to do what they did at the start of the year, if someone had said Hogan and Lever wouldn't be part of a, a large chunk of the year, I wouldn't have thought we'd, they'd get through to a preliminary final. So well done. Yeah, it was a bit of a shame that he went down, wasn't it? Because he was just coming good, as you said. He was. OK, time to mark them out of 10 now for what they did in 2018. You first one? Uh, yeah, super season, but uh, that final cost them one mark, so a seven for me. Yeah, I probably could have gone with eight, but I'll go with seven. Yeah, I've kept them at eight. I'm not marking them too hardly, despite uh, them returning to Melbourne after that Perth game uh, in a really demoralising way. All right, who cleaned up in 2018 for the Demons? Uh, I'm wrapped to speak about this guy, James Harms. I don't think anyone could have predicted what he was going to do. He was a rookie-listed player in 2014. He became the hunter, but... In the modern day game, you can't just tag and get no no no, uh, no ball. You have to win multiple possessions. And just to see him take down Salwood, Josh Kelly, some of the stars of the game was just huge. With vigour too, he yeah. loved it, didn't he? And it was a, a good thing that he came into this role when Jack Viney was out as well. Yeah. He seemed to lift when that responsibility came to him. So he was a star. Look, the other midfield star, of course, was Clayton Oliver, an All-Australian. He's their best player, I think. He probably goes back-to-back -back in their best and fairest. He might challenge... Uh, for that one for, with Max Gorn. But, look, he averaged 30 disposals a game, kicked 12 goals. He's one of the, the best ever draft picks, I think. Mm, yeah. Jason Taylor plucked him from nowhere, the recruiting team there at the D's, and he's been outstanding, a top five pick, and he's just one of the best players in the competition now. One Does it every ever draft picks. One of the best ever draft picks. I like picks. it. He's one of the great bolters, and he's the perfect pick. He's, uh, he's the player that everyone well, wants on their side. Would another club have taken him, though, at that pick? Oh, they say now. They do. They say now, yeah. but I'm not sure they would have. Okay. But it was a big risk at the time, and he mm. came good in the second half mm. of the year. OK, time now to look at who's under pressure for Karcher at the Demons. I'll kick it off here. But Jesse Hogan, not for ability and not for, for form and, and not for anything other than the two 
Perth clubs continually put out the lure mm. to him. And look, at some stage, I expect him to go back at some stage. And while the club Melbourne doesn't like it being talked about every single trade period, it will be talked about yet again this year despite him being contracted. I don't think they can let him go. I mean, he kicks 47 mm. goals in 20 games yeah. this year. He would have kicked 60 if he'd stayed fit. Uh, there's still a place yeah. for him, and he can go in the midfield too. Yeah, he judged quite harshly, I think. Uh, mine's Jaden Hunt, and I just wonder with Jaden Hunt, he only played the six games this year, do they say to him, uh, if you have a great preseason, you've gone past Jordan Lewis, and we look to the future? If they can't sell him that, I reckon maybe he looks for a new home. He because, should look for some, yeah. some more opportunities, shouldn't he? Mm. Because he's good enough to be playing he, yeah. in 18. Yeah. Yeah. This is is a, staggering full, wasn't it? it? Is, to think yeah. he could only play six games on, mm. on the back of what he produced in 2017. Yeah, yeah he's just got to get his ball use better over this off-season. All right, Lordy, you like uh, yeah. providing a laugh in these wash-ups. Where is it from uh, the Demons? Well, it's come with a man who's a good friend of mine. I think he's a senior coach in waiting, Craig Jennings. This was late last year. Everyone's going nuts after <laughs> they beat the Eagles. And Jeddo just sits there. And uh, it happened again this year. Watch this. Another great win against Adelaide in Adelaide. Watch Jeno. Does nothing. <laughs> Goody just goes whack over the head to Goody. Give us something, Jeno. He's the Iceman. And I reckon there's some lessons you can learn. And we know these two quite well. Petrarchs and Brayshaw. He's got to get a bit of this. You know him, Craig Jennings. I reckon next year he's got to get a bit of this. Watch the way they go. A bit of chin action here. Look. I'm not sure where this is going, on, but could so he bring Angus, a bit of that to it? Angus thinks that he actually had some stitches on his chin. Yeah. He was saying, leave my chin alone, but Christian's just gone for it. So <laughs> <laughs> I completely missed that one. <laughs> OK, they need to do a few things before they get 2019 in order. And uh, to me, I reckon they just need a, one of those midfield receiver types yeah. as opposed to the hard nuts they've got. You highlighted both Harms and, and Oliver, and they've got Brayshaw yeah. as well. I just really need a gaff type. Now, they appear, as we speak, to be out of the race for him, but someone, and I know they don't grow on trees, mm. that type of player, but I reckon they need to get creative in the trade period or, or the drafting period to get someone like that. Yeah. Would Aaron Hall be a good fit? Uh, I wouldn't be sold on and Aaron Hall filling that void. Yeah. And they wouldn't have the money for Shield, you think? or Because he's the type you probably talk about. I suppose they could, yeah. yeah. I haven't thought about Shield mm. being the one, but uh, I'll get a gaff type, but yeah. uh, I wouldn't worry about Hall. I think Sam Wiedemann's a big part of what they're going to build next mm. year. We saw him come on uh, the big stage in the final against Geelong, 24 touches and three goals. That was his breakout game. A little bit quieter the other two, but look, I like what we see from him. And if he can play that three-prong forward line, just go for it because there's room for him to be all, all in there, up yeah. near goal. I'm not sure if Wiedemann could play centre-half back next year with Hogan coming forward, but look, once they lost Lever, uh, mm. I thought it really did hurt, as you touched on. And that final, I think Sam Frost got badly exposed and then also uh, Oscar McDonald still, to me, isn't the number one defender. So is Steve May a possibility of joining the Melbourne Football Club next year. Well, they've met with him, haven't they? Yeah. So there's Does he the... fit in with if, if Lever's fit, though? Yeah, a good I, question. I think if you had Lever and you had... Well, they would put Oscar McDonald under pressure. I think yeah. Frost has probably gone past him. Yeah. But if you had Lever and uh, Steve May as your two key defenders, well, they'd go nearly as premiership favourite next year. OK, it's so time now to look where we think they're going to be finishing in 2019. Kick it off, Lordy. Yeah, they'll go back uh, to the top, I would have thought. So one to four. They should be right in the mix mm. for the flag next year, top four. I've got them repeating that same format of 2018. Callum Toomey, Matthew Lloyd, thank you. And thank you for watching The Wash Up for the Demons in 2018.